Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. We trying to change the minds. We trying to change and educate our people and show them who they truly are. The, the Lord said education is what you need. But you know what the education is going to do? It's going to take you back to the search of your fathers. It's going to take you and show you that this was preventable. You being called American black, that's a curse. What's your, what's your real name? Timothy. Timothy. What if I called you boy? You told me your name, Timothy, but I called you boy. And I kept calling you boy. What would you do? How would you feel if I kept calling you boy? If it, eventually you would. You know how? Because this is your real name. Your name Judah. But you respond to American black. What happened to make you change from Judah to American black? Let's not tempt the Lord. Let's not tempt God. He put us in this condition that we're in because of our disobedience. Now we got to come out of these conditions. The way we come out, how do, how do you think we got into these conditions to begin with? My brother, how do you think we got in? How do you think we got into poverty? How do you think we got into slavery? How did that happen? Absolutely. Give me that in Kings. Give me that in the first Kings. Absolutely. So, since we didn't practice his ways, how do we get out of these conditions? If we got in these conditions by not practicing his ways, how do we get out of these conditions? How do we get out of hatred? How do we get out of murder? How do we get out of selling drugs to our people? How do we get out of needing substances to actually help us feel better about ourselves? How do we get out of that? That's okay. We're going to read it to you. Read. First Kings 8. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them. You hear that? If they sin against you, talking about you, talking about me, and the Lord is angry with us, read. And deliver them to the enemy, so, so that they carry them away captives. You hear that? How do we come over here to America? What's our, what, what do they tell us our start in history is? We always go back to, and a lot of the movies like to point to it. You, they want to make America great again for a specific period in time. What time is that? You ever recall this happening to our people? No. You ever heard, uh, seen about this in school? They ever taught you that in school? Yeah. What is this? What happened? This is depicting slavery. This man has lashes on his back. These are our Northern Kingdom brothers, the Hispanics and the Indians. In the 1400s, they went into captivity first. A couple hundred years later, it was our turn. They brought us over here. They brought us into slavery on slave ships. That's how our names are changed. That's how come we can't go no farther than... Look, they tell you, you African-American, right? Where from in Africa are you from? Bring it out. You understand somebody told you who you are? Do you understand somebody continues to tell you how to respond and how to act in certain situations? You understand a person tell you they get it how you live? Those are all outside influences. And we teach these same outside influences to our children. And they perpetuate it and they make Chicago a murder capital. It is crazy. It's time for us to come out of that thinking, right? Let's read. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto a land, unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves, 
So now, right now, my brother, you are in the process of bethinking yourself. My brother, my brother, my brother, you know one of the most important things for our community is? Did you know education is one of the most important things for our community? Oh, yes, sir, bro. Why don't we, why don't we glorify education? Why don't we, my brother, why don't we glorify education? Why don't we glorify it? What are some of the things we glorify as a people in our neighborhoods? We got education going on right here, right now, and ain't nobody here but you. And this is the best education you could ever want. Why? Because these are the words of God. We got great education coming from the words of God. We see that our people are in a deplorable state. They're in a deplorable condition. They are afflicted. And what would they rather do? They would rather keep walking or ignore us or keep driving. Bring it out. What do we glorify as a people? What do we hold high? What do we hold dear? What's the most important thing to our people? Our ancestors? Our people don't care nothing about ancestors. You know what our people care about? They care about money. What else do they care about? Money, drugs, right? These are things our people care about. But why don't they care about education? Because that's what's being fed to them. Give me Deuteronomy. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. All right? I want you to listen to this. This is why our people act the way they act. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Bring it out. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. You hear that? That last part is what I really want to hit on. The want of all things. We are people who need a lot of things. We desire a lot of things. We lack the necessities to sustain ourselves as a people. One of the simple things that we lack as a nation is education. We need an education on who we are. You understand that, my sister? If we knew who we were, we wouldn't treat ourselves like bitches and niggas. If we knew we were the sons and daughters of the living God, we wouldn't shoot each other down in the streets. But the image that's painted of us and the image that we continue to help them perpetuate allows us to see each other as niggas and bitches. You understand that? We'll hit, a, we'll hit our brother in the head in a minute. Bring it out. Let them get caught slack. Let them get caught lacking. And we hurting enough. We'll hit him in his head for what he got. Why is that? Because movies perpetuate that. Rap music perpetuate that. We trying to change the minds. We trying to change and educate our people and show them who they truly are. The, the Lord said education is what you need. But you know what the education is going to do? It's going to take you back to the search of your fathers. It's going to take you and show you that this was preventable. You being called American black, that's a curse. What's your what's your real name? Timothy. Timothy. What if I called you boy? You told me your name Timothy, but I called you boy. And I kept calling you boy. What would you do? How would you feel if I kept calling you boy? If it, eventually you would. You know how? Because this is your real name. Your name Judah. But you respond to American black. What happened to make you change from Judah to American black? Bring it out. You see this? That's the Lord's anger. The Lord's anger did that. Because we got away from our laws. I'm glad you said you don't eat none of the defiled food. That's one of the laws you keep. But I want you to hear this law as well. Let's go to the hair covenant, uh, Corinthians. The Bible says when you're listening or when you're in the spirit of prophecy, you're supposed to uncover your head being a man. Look around. Look at all these men. He's cold. Look at him. He's cold, but he still got his head uncovered. Why is that? Let's read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying 
having his head covered dishonors his head. So what that said was, there's a hierarchy. You got the Most High God, he is over every, everybody. You got Christ right up under him. Under him is man and then woman. What society was great at doing, which was one of the ways we were called outside of our names, they was able to flip that upside down. They said, it's God, Christ, woman, the child, and then the man. The order is flipped. But what we want to do is we want to teach you the true order. You are over the woman. You report straight to the Most High Son, the Christ. You report that way. Now, when these words are coming out, whose head should be covered? Read that one more time. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. So who has their head covered when the scriptures come out? The woman. The woman has her head covered. Are you equal with the woman? Or did that just say it's man above woman? Because remember, it's no 50-50, it's order, rank and structure. The only person you equal with is me, as being a man. I'm not equal to Christ, I'm not equal to God. And I damn sure ain't equal to my children or a woman. So we need scriptures coming out, men, they have their heads uncovered. You understand that? So, in order to show the Lord that we believe in his laws, believe in the scriptures, believe in us be thinking ourselves and coming out of these conditions, us believing that that's the way to honor God, what should you do? Having your head covered while the scriptures come out, what should you do? Uncover your head. Go ahead. We going over scriptures right now, uncover that head. All praise to the most high. That's the true sign of repentance. You, you want to learn. And the Lord said you will learn. But there's something that you have to do, okay? Deuteronomy 10. How you doing, my brother? What's your name? Owen. Owen? Where you going to, Owen? Where you coming from? Just going home to do some stuff? Listen at this. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? You know you're an Israelite. You're an Israelite. We haven't really went over there with you yet. You just walked up. I need some tissue. You got some tissue? You're an Israelite, so the Lord requires something of you, meaning you are supposed to do something. Read. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God? You hear that? You have to fear God. Taking off that head cover, that's, a, that's something that we show that we fear the Lord because we believe in his commandments. We believe in what he did to our people. We know that he can destroy us like that, or he can take the slow route and debilitate us. He's the he's a meditator of terror. Everything that happens on this earth happens because he says so. It's not no um, no red devil running under the earth, you know, provoking the spirits. No, everything that's happening to us happens on this earth, and the Lord says, "I'm in charge of that." You believe that? You believe that the devil and and, and the Lord on the same page fighting back and forth, or the Lord has power over Satan? Absolutely. I don't know where that story got twisted up at, but we have to continue to show that we have a fear of God. Read, and how do you do that? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. You hear that? Walk in his ways. We discover his ways here in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, including the Apocrypha. Read. And to love him. And to love him. What's that? What what that mean? Good, good. All praise. Keep the fear of God in you too, wherever you go. Read. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. Where do we find the commandments of God at? Because he, he says, absolutely, he says, that that's how you fear him, and that's how you show that you love him. Okay, well, where do I find it at? What's the answer? 
If your son, you got a son, you got a daughter, your daughter came and said, how do I fear the Lord and how do I keep the commandments? Where do I find the commandments at? What would you tell them? Okay, that's an honest answer. And that's why the Lord put you here before these prophets today. All right? It's just, we ain't no regular men. You may look at us and see we look just like you, but we not regular men. You don't see regular men standing up and doing what we're doing as far as bringing our people together. You don't see that. So what you're going what you're gonna learn is, if you look at that flyer, we got contact information on there. You're gonna come around a bunch of brothers who are doing the same thing you want to do, and that's to please God. That's right. And by me pleasing God by extension, this brother benefits from that. Me pleasing God by extension, you coming around and want to please God too, you're going to benefit from that. That's the love of God. That's how you show the love of God. It ain't on Thanksgiving or Christmas. It ain't setting up shop, handing out turkeys. That's not the love of God. Bring it out. The love of God is me showing you when you in error according to the laws of God and how to correct that. So ain't no small answer to where the commandments are. You have to come and learn by practice. All the commandments from Genesis to Revelation. It's going to take a process of time, all right? I can give you a general, it's in Exodus 20, some of them, but the definition of them is scattered throughout the Bible. And you're not going to know how to interpret them unless you come around the folks, come around the brothers. Keep reading. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day, for thy good. It's for your good. It's for our good. If we want to see our sisters, our daughters, our mothers, our brothers, we want to see them do good, we're going to influence them to keep the commandments. And if they don't want to keep it, that's on them. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep these commandments. And that's the spirit you should have. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 